really proud of Trayvon. Probably played about 75%. He'll be a lot better by goal time. Hopefully Josh will be back. Um, I'm very proud of my team. You know, we came up close. I bet you all thought I was going to go for two, didn't you? <laughs> Caught so much flack. But, uh, you know, we came up so close last week and then have the opportunity this week to uh, get back in it and, and get really rewarded for what they've been able to do. So outside of that, 10-2, and two, it's amazing here for these guys for everything they've gone through. It really is. I mean, it's, you should, you expect me to be jumping up and down, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm tired. So. How do you feel during the last flight when you went soft? Well, yeah, I mean, the problem was, is, you know, they ran off and on, and, and so we tried to get our big group in, so we ended up in a regular defense. And so we called a play that we hadn't worked all week. We basically brought one of the corners off the edge, and he got a hold of his legs. So sometimes, I guess practice is overrated. So that's, you know, our kids have been stepping up all night. It's hard. It's hard for them. You know, they, they had to play with their third quarterback. I mean, I, I truly understand that because we've been having to do a lot of that stuff all year. So it's it's been a difficult it's been a difficult time for all of them, and they they've hung through and they they've been tough and they they haven't made excuses and they've gone about their business. So. But I mean, you're, you're sitting with me here to, because it's, you guys think it's a robbery. That's a good Baylor football team. Very well coached. Do the things they do. And um, it was a very good TCU team tonight. Found a way to win. And so it's, if you had told me it was going to go to overtime, I would have told you you're crazy. So. What was the uh, play call for you on that last play where Ty and. Um, um, I can't even think of his name. Made the play at the uh, on Chafin. Uh, I think it's Julius Lewis. Yeah. I think our corner. Well, like I said, we we had not worked on with that defense in the game when they brought in all those tight ends and the big 400 pounders. So, so what happened was is we hadn't blitzed it. So we brought. I just told him to come off the edge, and somehow our linebacker got through the crease. After the game, why did you shake Harper's hand? Why didn't I? I couldn't find him. I tried to go find him. I mean, I couldn't find him, so it's, I would have loved to have shook his hand. I mean, it's, him and I had a great conversation for the ball game, so it's. Coach, talk about your secondary. They don't give up very many yards, and you guys had great coverage all night on those pretty fast receivers. Can you talk about their performance? Um, we, we, we tweaked some things in our coverage how we needed to play. We watched some things that Oklahoma did. And, uh, Kids believed in it. You know, we got fortunate. You know, again, it was raining. It was all the other things that went on. We didn't exactly light it up. I mean, it was it was pretty tough circumstances down there. So. Yeah, Drew, how would you rate the season overall, just given the circumstances you hey, faced? Hey, I mean, it's everything we've gone through. I mean, if you just look at all the things we've had to do um, early, in the, all the players that were out, even for like the Texas Tech game. Um, you know, it's, you didn't have. The other two senior defense bands, uh, Davion Pearson was his first game back. And if you just go down the list, uh, through the list of everything that we had, um, it's, it's just been an outstanding. Coaches, really a support staff. It's, it's really been, it's been a, a, a whole building success for it because between our trainers, equipment guys, strength coaches, everybody doing what they were supposed to do, how they needed to do it. And nobody, nobody really lost faith in what was going to go on. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, if you're going to count us out, you definitely would have counted us out last week, which, you know, I, that's why I tweeted out what I did. I mean, it's, kid to it is, we're not going to make excuses. You know, we're not going to make excuses. We'll play and let the chips fall and we'll go about our business. We did the same thing tonight. I think that's the whole key is to find a way to get things done and see how it goes. I mean, it's, 10 to 20 years from now, when you look back, will this game stick out for you? Um, I don't know if it'll stick out. I mean, you're talking about sticking out. You're talking about Rose Bowl, you know, Peach Bowl. I mean, there's, there's been a 2005 game of beating Adrian Peterson. I mean, there's been some unbelievable ball games. The one thing that what will stick out won't be so much the ball game tonight. It'll be the guys that played it. 
to be honest with you. I mean, the kids, they fought their tails off. I mean, they had a couple true freshmen, guys that got burnt, a couple guys that got burnt early in the year that fly back, um, gained confidence. Um, it's, and so it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's, you, know, you, you, you can't start listing everybody and all their contributions of what they've been able to do for the season to be where it's at right now. From Aaron Green catching the tip pass <clears throat> to coming back in the Kansas State game down, what, what 35 to 10 or 17? I mean, it's, it's just been a long season. I'll promise you this, I'm glad, I'm glad the regular season's done. I've got an 8 o'clock meeting in the morning because we got recruits here. And I'll promise you this. I'm glad to go see them and not have to get up and write a script and start working on vertical routes. So, what it's just been a long year. What do you, you think of the post game scene with everybody on the field? Uh, I try to get out of the way of it. My, my uh, history has told me that whether they're on your side or not on your side, it's usually I start running around the perimeter trying to get out of the way. But obviously, I was I, I tell you this much. We would not have won this ball game. It wouldn't have been, especially, especially our student section. I mean, they were, the whole stadium was loud. I mean, we needed the help, and uh, they gave it to us, to be honest with you. But especially the student section was just outstanding. I mean, just outstanding. And they've been that way all year. The stadium's been all the, that way all year, but they were just outstanding. I mean, it was definitely a we victory, not just a football team. It was a we victory. So, uh, on that last Baylor possession, before, on the, their first fourth down run, did you think they had not called timeout? Yeah, I didn't think that. I, I had a little bit of a problem. Little bit of a problem. But, you know, it's, it had the same thing happen to us uh, in the Texas Tech game where yeah, Texas Tech was a Texas Tech where we thought we had a timeout. So I've learned kind of like at home, I'm not going to win that argument, so I, I mean, just. Coach, can you talk about the way uh, Ty Summers bounced back this week? He had 23 tackles for you. Can you talk about his performance? Well, you know, I haven't seen him, um, but obviously somebody made some. But, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. Traven's 198 pounds. He's a sophomore. Montreal's a freshman. Uh, Julius Lewis played today. He was a true freshman. Had the first pick that got called back because of the quarterback, uh, roughing the quarterback. So, I mean, it's. There was, there was a bunch that went on. Considering everything that this team's gone through this year, do you consider this one of the better jobs you've done coaching? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to let you guys grade me. I mean, it's, my job is just to win ball games. So, yeah. So, you know, how much, how much were you, was your offensive staff struggling to find anything that would work in the second half? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just – it just there wasn't much going on. You know, again, they've got a good defense. I mean, very athletic. We could. They did a nice job. They kept a spy on. Um, they kept a spy on Trayvon. So anytime he broke down, they they weren't going to let him run, and he wasn't full speed, so he wasn't going to make any moves and make anybody miss. And so it's. And he did a good job, to be honest with you, just getting out of bounds so that he stayed he stayed healthy. I mean, it's, I was worried about the one. Uh, Scramble where they really hit it pretty hard on their sidelines whether he was going to play anymore. So, how do you think the weather affected him? Oh, I don't think the weather had as much to do with it. I think he just, he's got to, we got to get him fully healthy. I mean, it was just a tremendous effort on his part to come back and play. And here's the thing starting on Sunday, he said, Tape it up. He says, I feel better. And so, if what he thought better was last Sunday, and you saw it, it was probably at 75, 80% tonight. Uh, he was about what he thought better was was about 60 last Sunday. So I mean, I mean, God wanted to finish. Uh, he speaks volumes, really, what he's what he's been for us here at TCU in his years. He's been here through all the highs and all the lows. So, Gary, did you get a good look at your partner uh, being able to get off that punt despite opening barrel and down on him? I mean, he, he that was that was maybe one of the key plays of the game, really. Yeah. I wasn't overly happy with dropping it in the first place. So I, I never got to the part where he got it off well. We're just gonna we're just gonna say that we're just gonna say that you know you can't watch the rush. 
So it's in those kind of ball games you worry because we couldn't get the full, we couldn't get the field flipped. The problem with that play was we finally got it out. Finally, we're going to get this is second to last possession. We're finally going to get the ball, punt it, and get them down in the 15. Maybe we can stop them, and then we get a short field because we for the whole third quarter we played the other direction. And um, it's one of those things where you know when things like that happen, you just you're waiting. It's like you're wondering if you're going to win this because you pretty soon they're going to make a play. And so you have the whole Coleman one. Wasn't 100. When do you think they'll be 100? Oh, they could be back. I mean, we had a whole month. Do you think he'll stay next year? What's that? Do you think he'll stay next year? He's a senior. So, so. Listen, he'll come back for four years already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if he wants to do that. School's not necessarily a, he, he'll graduate in December. I think he's he's ready for him to go on to his next experience, to be honest with you. Gary, with the weather and everything, big picture, how did this test your patience? Um, well, it's, we both had to play in it. I mean, it's, I'll be honest with you. I can't call when I have heavy jackets on. I just, so I mean, pretty much I just got soaked. I was frozen. So it's, but I mean, it's, it's frustrating because you want, it's the end of the year. You got two really good football teams and you wanted to, for everybody to see the best of everything. And today was a survival game. You know, how do you, Who's gonna who's gonna make the less mistakes and who's gonna finally make a couple plays and so does ten wins mean something more than nine? Oh, yeah, I mean, anytime you get into double digits, you better you better just handle it. This this senior class, if you count their wretched freshman year in 2011, they're part of three double digit. They're 11 and two, and then 12 and one, and then they were you know 10 and two this year. So it's it's hard it's hard in five year span to ever be a part of that many double digit wins, you don't get that opportunity very often. It's hard to win ball games in college anymore. Hard to win ball games. Doesn't matter who you play. Gary, excuse me if you've been asked this before, but what were the officials doing standing over the ball at the end of the game? I think they were getting he got his headset on. I think he was confirming that it was short. On the last play? Yeah. Yeah, they were confirming that it was short. From where? From Marie Pelly Booth. Don't you know that's where we do all, we make sure, don't you know we make sure all of that. Get it right. Don't get me in trouble with the officials. <laughs> I'm always in trouble with the officials. Don't get me in trouble with the officials. What do you think of your defense on Corey Coleman? I only had one catch. Well, again, we, obviously one catch is a little, it's hard to do against him. So, you know, there's a lot of circumstances that went into that. Again, you know, it's, I'm just, I'm glad we won the ball game. Kids played their tails off. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I think early they tried to and they, they made, made, made mistakes with their young quarterback. And then I think they got, they got away from it except for a couple times. They didn't want to hurt, they didn't want to beat themselves. Because they have a good running game too. They got good running backs. That offensive line is very physical and gave themselves an opportunity. Our kids did a nice job of making plays. And so it's, what do you think of Josh Carraway's impact tonight? I don't know. I don't, I'd have to watch the film before I can tell whether his, his impact was. How did y'all prepare for a Sean movement? Same way we do everybody. Just got to block him. Well, it, there's a rule. If you ever have to go back for the ball, then you have to fall on it. If you're going forward, you can pick it up. And he was going forward, and there was not, a, there wasn't a crowd. That's. Do you play the game? Oh, uh, now that we know that, I don't know. I think probably that fourth down stop was right up there with it. But you'd also have to say catch the ball in the back of the end zone. I mean, there's just a lot of plays, especially when it comes down to there's not a lot of plays to be made. So when you finally do make some, you know, people say, well, four or five, six plays make a difference in the ball game. I'd probably say that we were right around that number. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like clarifying, you know, why did I go for two last week? Because up to that point, we'd gone for two, right? we were 100% on the road. You got to take ball games. Why did I keep the extra point tonight? Because we're at home. It's, it's been 
know my rules since we've been here. So it's, we were out of gas last week. Do you have two more questions? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, here, one more. I'm curious how much your game plan may have altered if you were paying attention to forecasts earlier in the week. Well, defensively it didn't. But I did, you know, we, we always game plan for a heavy run or a heavy pass. I mean, that's, in this league, you better get ready for all of it. Um, finally, we started running the outside zone, running the stretch, and it helped us in the fourth quarter move the football. Probably should have went to it earlier in the ball game. Uh, I think we, we had a little bit more success because if you look, their defensive ends just tee off and rush the pass, you're going to get a lot of trouble, and we did. We got in a lot of trouble. Could Jaden have kicked for you field goals tonight? Yeah. But you know, we didn't go, we went on the fourth down the first time because you're not going to beat Baylor kicking field goals. When you get in one of these kind of games, there's some games you kick field goals. This was not one of those games you kick field goals. So that's why we went early. Obviously, again, we can look at hindsight, so well, we would have kicked it, we'd been three points up, and then we wouldn't have to do all that stuff. I mean, that's your guys' storyline now. <laughs> Coach B screws up, he didn't kick the elbow. <laughs> last question. Gary, you guys, you know, Big 12 got left out last year. You obviously, you were a big part of that, unfortunately for you. But this year, after going to the whole league, how good is this league and does it definitely deserve to be? Well, you know, I always, I always say the way you find out what a league's like is how they do in bowl games. You know, it's, last year we said it, you know, we've we got to get ready to play. I think he found out Oklahoma played Clemson. Clemson was a pretty game, good football team at the end of the year, and they carried that over. Uh, but I think you have three or four teams that are, especially at the top, that are very tough to beat, that have a lot of explosive players. And so, I mean, if you just look, if you look just in the state of Texas, one of the things we have, you just got great skill, look at Houston. If you look at the skill and what, you know, SMU scoring points, you got, you got all you got all you got all the schools here that can they can take you vertical. And so it's a different style than what you know maybe people that's why I changed offenses two years ago. Because it's just a different style. Uh, but sometimes you gotta do what the Romans do. I mean that's that's what they do. So I mean go about your business. I mean it's but I it's hard on a on a dry field with First team quarterbacks. I mean, those guys. Those guys can really run, and our guys can really run. So, and you got a guy like Pete Ryan in Oklahoma, Shepard. I mean, you just you got some great skill players. So, thanks, coach. Well, players. See you.